Welcome everybody to the presentation, webinar, demonstration, uh, and tasting, all that in one. We hope you'll, uh, you'll enjoy the next hour or so with us. Only quickly, myself uh, with uh, my business partner, Stoyan, who is uh, on board and sort of helping with the tech support of the webinar. Uh, we are partners at The Old Seller. Uh, and uh, we happen to be a specialist importer of uh, Bulgarian wines and spirits in UK, as well as expanding our range as we speak with uh, other wines and spirits from the Balkan countries, being quite an interesting region to explore all together and want to continue promoting and to let the UK public know about uh, the whole potential and uh, the, all the discoveries that are from this region that are to be, uh, to be made. Uh, we are wholesalers, retailers, agents, and distributors amongst all the channels being uh, off-trade, on-trade, uh, direct retail to uh, private customers and all that. But amongst all, we believe uh, that we are ambassadors for these uh, wines and spirits, as I mentioned, to promote them to the, to the British public, and in that regard, even to the public around the world, the English speaking public, uh, to get them to discover what is coming from this region, being one of the oldest uh, in the world to produce wines and spirits. And of course, coming down to the main topic of the, of the evening tonight, which is actually Rakia. And some of you may know about it, quite a few more I'm sure don't know so much about it. But that's, what, that's how tonight we have uh, three producers, three experts about their products and about uh, Rakia and the whole production process of it. And of course, our good friend, uh, Georgi Radev, owner of Lucky Cane uh, Bar in Angel in uh, East London, that is gonna entertain us and tutor us through uh, what Rakia is and a few cocktails that he's especially uh, put together and made and will present uh, how to do them for us. So that's how we want to do this relation between the traditional way to enjoy rakia, which is neat or with salad or pickles to begin your meal and all that. And the more modern, fun way to say that a lot of people relate to in uh, cocktails. Uh, I'll pass it to Georgie to get him started. Uh, I know he's impatient. So Georgie, the stage is yours. And maybe you need to unmute yourself as well. There you go, is that better? Probably kept, you may have lost him. Can you hear me? Hello? Maybe. Yeah. I'm good now. Can you hear me now? You hear George, you guys. You know? I do. Yeah, all right, perfect. Hmm. Well, welcome to Lucky Kane. My name is uh, Georgie Radev, uh, and I want to introduce you briefly. Just this is Claudia. She's going to be helping me technically because uh, I'm not that good when it comes to Zoom. So she's here to help me with that. And later on, uh, because we're going to be making some cocktails, and unfortunately, uh, through Zoom, you cannot taste the cocktails. I'll taste them, but I'll give her to taste it as well. And we're going to uh, uh, check her opinion. What does she think about Rakia and what does she think about Rakia cocktails? And this is a person that's never tried Rakia or Rakia cocktails. So that will be something interesting. So you can go and have a glass of wine now and I'll call you when the cocktails are here. So, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, I'm Georgie Radev. Uh, I own this bar called uh, Lucky Cane. Um, it's a tropical escape in the middle of Angel. We've got few awards uh, for our cocktails and good service. So I think we're doing something pretty uh, correct. And uh, normally I'm known to travel around the world and talk about rum, tiki and tropical drinks. But uh, uh, today, uh, this is very special for me as we've spoken with Dido before because this is part of my culture. I'm from Bulgaria. I grew up drinking rakia and even though I don't think I'm a big expert on it, I've got three experts in here that if I say something incorrectly, they will happily correct me on it. But hopefully, uh, if I, think, I think I know, I know pretty much um, enough about, uh, for Rakia, and I'm learning more and more every time. So when it comes to Rakia, guys, this is uh, the spirit of Bulgaria. 
this is really kind of like almost defined us as a nation who we are. How exactly it started, where it started from, there are different stories. I don't know which one exactly is true, which one is not, but I know which one I like the most, uh, which links it a little bit to Rome, and uh, you understand it in a second. Um, so Bulgaria was found in six, uh, 681, and after that, in the 14th century, was occupied by the Ottoman Empire. And this is, I believe, when first uh, was um, uh, heard about the stories about that liquid that was making people brave. And that liquid was the rakia, uh, coming from the Turkish uh, Yeni Raki, and we just called it a rakia. And the raki comes from uh, the Arabs, which have anise-flavored drink called raki. But this name comes from Arak, from Indonesia, which is kind of the grandparent of Rome. And this is kind of like the little link that I create between, between uh, uh, well, not I create, but I think it's there, between Rome uh, and Rakia. But nevertheless, where it starts from is what happened after. And uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the Rakia is kind of defined as of who we are in Bulgaria, so much inside of our culture. People say that Bulgarians are very welcoming. Uh, when you come to a Bulgarian person's house, they're gonna give you uh, all they can. And they're very welcoming. And this has a lot to do with rakia because in every home, people in the home, they make sure that they have enough rakia in there and enough um, food that you can serve it with. And on the same time, rakia defined us as a people why we are so uh, welcoming to each other because rakia is, is consumed in a different way. It's consumed a dinner with the food. So you will either invite your neighbors or your friends or you sit down with the family and you sit down early enough so you can start having few rakias with your salad and with your appetizers in the beginning before you have your main course. And that could be anything from 30, 40, 50 minutes or two, three hours, it depends. Uh, but uh, this is very important uh, for the relationships that you are building with the family or with the people that you love, or with the people that you just met. Because this uh, two hours or whatever is gonna be of uh, drinking slowly, we drink very slowly. So you're sipping on the rakia, drinking some water on the side, and you're eating on the same time. And you really enjoy the connection between the food and the rakia. And the more you drink, the more you open your heart and you start talking and have a relationship between the people that you're, you're having that dinner with. And then eventually you're gonna have your main course, you're gonna be full, after that, you might have the urge to or you might not, you might go to bed. It's not about getting drunk. It's about getting all that relationship between people as you're sitting and having that dinner. And I think this is what defined us as Bulgarians. And this is why I call the, the Rakia the spirit uh, of Bulgaria. It's very, uh, I think uh, it's another link between Rome and Rakia is because the only other place that I know that is so strong is Jamaica and Rome. Uh, so for example, when... In, in Bulgaria, rakia is so linked that if someone is born, people will drink rakia. When someone dies, people are going to drink rakia. If when you open a bottle, you you pour the first sip out. Or every time you think about someone, someone that died, you pour a little bit out. So it's so linked to our culture uh, that uh, it defines us who we are. And uh, the, the traditional way of drinking it, is, uh, as I said, you, you're drinking it neat, slowly, and you're having it with your dinner or with, with your food in general, which is a great way of consuming spirit because most of the time we know um, wine or beer or ales that you're going to be drinking while you're, you're, you're having your dinner. But rakia works perfect. Uh, for, so it's a, it's a great substitute for your wine or anything else uh, that normally you're drinking and you can try it. So this is your traditional way. Um, but I want to introduce something different because um, Rakia is, is so versatile. Like we, uh, Rome is one of the most versatile spirits that I know, but Rakia is super versatile as well because in Bulgaria, most of the time Rakia is made out of grapes, but it doesn't have to be. It could be made with, uh, with any fruits that, that you want. And I, when I was living in Bulgaria, I tried some, uh, some weird ones, like even from figs, and, uh, and like delicious, but you can have it more, mostly is with plum or with apricots. 
Um, you can even have it with berries, which is absolutely delicious. But in general, most of the time is made uh, out of grapes. And uh, differently than uh, the grappa, it's not always made only from the leftover of the wine making. It could be, uh, or it could be made uh, with all the juice and the seeds and the skin, or it could be made a similar way that you're making brandy or cognac and you're actually using the wine to ferment the wine uh, and make a very much more clean uh, spirits. So uh, after that, you can age it, you can age it in a different barrels, you can blend it. So there's so many different things that you can do with the rakia. And um, this fruity flavor that you got in there, after that, it works perfect in the cocktails. It could be just substituting uh, uh, the, the rakia, sorry, the different spirit in the classic for rakia and it still works. Or you can just follow the flavors that you get into the drink to create something special. And today, uh, I followed the flavors of the three rakias that we've got in here, and I created a special cocktails that are bespoke for the flavors of those uh, rakias. And uh, first of all, uh, I'm gonna let the specialists to talk about their rakias and explain you uh, what are we tasting, what are the flavors in there. And once you taste that, they'll pass it on to me, and then I will tell you why did I make that cocktail this way so I can follow the flavors of the rakia and I can explain you how you can start experiment and making your own cocktails at home in a very simple way or I'm sure we've got some buttoners in there and I want to kind of like inspire them and see uh, if they can do some cocktails and try it maybe introduce it's a new spirit it's got a great story and uh, why not introducing something new uh, on the market because it's even new in Bulgaria when it comes to cocktails when it comes to drinking it, hell no. But uh, when it comes to cocktails, it's pushing uh, the limits there as well. And I know a few Bulgarian bartenders that are making some great stuff. I went to a few um, exhibitions and I tried some Rakia cocktails. Uh, so now I would love to pass it on to the experts when it comes to Rakia. I'll learn a few things myself. Great stuff. Uh, thank you, Georgie. Well, let's go on with uh, the three Rakias, guys. The very first of... Uh which is uh, Burger 63 by a Black Sea Gold uh, Distillery. And I would like to introduce Stamen to say a few words uh, for that uh, Rakia and for, for the distillery itself. Good evening, everyone. Hope you hear me clear. Uh, yes. I'm Stamen from Black Sea Gold. Uh, uh, as the, the name, uh, uh, we are located on the, on the coast of Black Sea in Pomoria, Bulgaria, near to... It's a sunny beach resort. You can see also the pictures of the presentation of our distillery and our product. Uh, the history of Black Sea Gold began in uh, 1924 when uh, the people of Pomoria set up the first viticulture and winemaking cooperative. Uh, in 1994, the winery imported eight original charities pot steels from the Cognac region in France, which helped the, the factory uh, to start creating the highest and uh, the highest quality types of rakia and brandies in Southeast Europe. Uh, these are the only, uh, the only one of this type uh, pot steels in Southeast Europe. Uh, till uh, these days, so we have eight columns uh, it comes still uh, with a continuous method, uh, method of action and eight pot stills uh, and produced between 1 million and 200,000 and uh, 2 million liters of rakia every year. Every produced liter is uh, poured to maturity in more than uh, uh, 12,000 barrels. Oh, uh, we talk about uh, oak barrels made fr uh, from b typical Bulgarian oak from Stranja Mountain. Uh, and also we own uh, over 650 hectares of uh, wine yards of the most popular classical wine grape varieties. Uh, about uh, Rokia Burga 63 is made specially from Muscatotoneo, from our 
own vineyards in Burgess region. Uh, and this is the, the where the, the name of the Rokia came from. Uh, we produce uh, brandies and Rokia only from wine materials uh, for uh, etc. fermented grape juice, not from uh, grape mash or porridge. Uh, after the end of the fermentation, every wine material is sent for distillation and we distill it immediately to save the, the great and fresh aroma of the grape and to, to transmit it in the distillate. Uh, we use, for, for Burgess 63, we use uh, column steels with continuous method faction. Uh, here we, we talk about uh, multiple distillation in period of minutes. Uh, for the, the, this is the difference between pot steels. Uh, we also, uh, after the, the batch is uh, ready, it goes for the, uh, it goes to the maturation department. We have around 88 big Wagger barrels with volume of uh, five to 10,000 liters. They are made from the traditional Bulgarian oak. Uh, they are already, uh, they are old and exhausted, but uh, that is good for us because uh, when we pour a Kia uh, in these barrels, uh, it's ages there for six to 12 months. And uh, uh, this is good uh, opportunity for the beverage for micro oxygenation and to open even more the unmatched and unique aromas and the taste. Uh, but without uh, coloring, so the barrels don't give color to, to the beverage. Uh, and uh, also this uh, saves the, the freshness of the, the aroma and taste. And uh, if you taste the rakia for first time, so maybe this is the moment mm -hmm. if you have near to you uh, the bottle of Burger 63, you can pour and taste it. Uh, you can feel the freshness, the, the purity, the, the nuances of flowers, lavender, candies. Uh, uh, because of the immediately distilled, it captures and uh, concentrate the delicate muscat scent. Uh, usually in Bulgaria, drink rakia for dinner with the salad, as George said. Uh, and uh, for example, the traditional Bulgarian salad with tomatoes, cucumbers, white brine cheese, called Shopska salad. Uh, also, you can enjoy the rakia uh, during, the, during the whole dinner and combine it with uh, every dish, with the salad, with the main dish, or uh, after with, you can either drink it with vegetables, meat, fish, cheese. And that's all, I think. Thank you for that you heard me. And cheers. Cheers and Nazdrave Stamen. Uh, great stuff from Black Sea Gold Distillery. On to Georgie to excite us with something uh, unusual, including that Rekia. Show us, Georgie. Yeah. Um, first of all, I just uh, uh, wanted to say did I tell you guys that uh, we, uh, Rakia, is really part of our, our culture and we drink a lot? It just said that they are making two million liters of rakia and that is just one of the producers and i guarantee you that probably 80 percent of that is consumed in bulgaria and we have probably six six million people from which probably four and a half are the drinking part so uh just just to to to, to understand that yes we do like rakia <laughs> and we do know how to drink it um and burga 63 for those of you that you're not from bulgaria uh, Burgas is a beautiful place by the sea. So if you have never been to Bulgaria, this is a place where you should start uh, your visits. And don't stop because there's many other places. But the seaside is beautiful. So first of all, um, you've tried that probably already. Well, let, let's smell it together. That floral notes, that light fruity floral notes that you get 
for me, this is what you get from Chilean Pisco. So if I have never tried a rakia in my life and I smell it, I would think that this is a Chilean Pisco because you get all that kind of like a clean, floral, grapey, uh, and quite uh, uh, fruity notes. So therefore, I thought that I'm going to do something that is uh, similar to a sour because uh, I wanted to make a Bulgarian version of the sour and call it Burga Sour instead of being known as the Pisco Sour. And what we're going to do is you get your shaker, a fancy one that says Lucky Kane and George Rabbit. You can see it. And uh, first of all, we will add double shots of Burgas 63. Go. If you don't have a measure, you can just pour a nice shot in there. You wouldn't be wrong if you had a bit more. There you go. And this is going to add all the flavors of the raki in there, all that floral notes that I was talking about. And then after that, instead of using sugar, I'm going to use honey uh, water, which this is basically <clears throat> um, two parts of honey to one part of water. The reason why I don't put straight away honey is because honey could be a little bit thick and it's difficult to um, mix it with the drink. It's easier to use it in the honey water. So I will put 15 milliliters of honey water. There you go. And plus, honey is used a lot in Bulgaria. We eat a lot of honey. So that's why I said I'm going to kind of like make it this sour to be more uh, Bulgarian. There you go. Then after that, I'll put lemon. Freshly squeezed lemon juice is the best because you get less acidity than you would have gotten from the one that is bottled. Then another thing that is very typical Bulgarian is rose water. We are famous for our roses. And uh, this is going to make it, plus the floral rakia and the rose water is going to work so beautifully together with the honey and the lemon. All right. So from the, you got to be very careful when you're using that rose water because that is very powerful. So this uh, bar spoon is uh, 2.5 milliliters. And I'm literally going to pour not to the top even. A little bit more than, than, than half of that bar spoon. Now put it inside. And that is enough. Trust me, that is a powerful stuff. Then after that, we need to put egg whites. So I'll just put the egg white inside. Go. Like this. Now you can you can do a dry shake if you want to in the beginning. I'll just mix it up a little bit like this. Just, uh, you don't have to do a dry shake. You just put the, the ice in there. Make sure you've got a nice, clean ice uh, that is not watered down. So you can do a good shake and not watering down the, the cocktail. And then give it a nice shake because you want to mix all the ingredients together. Hey! Hey! <laughs> How are you doing, my brother? Okay. When you do that shake, the problem with this shake is, is that the shake will get stuck to the top. We will get it. There you go. And now, we we'll put it in the glass. You can find a strain. I personally just go like this. And then uh, after that, the only garnish that you're going to get on the top will be right here. Just a drop of Peychard's Peters. Put a little drop on the top. Like this. You can play around a little bit just with the, with the edges. Do a little palm tree if you want to, like this. Go. And 
this is this is it. That is just as simple as it goes. This is your uh, Burgas Sour. Cheers. Claudia, do you want to try the drink? Let's see oh, what, what a girl that never tries Rakia in her life thinks. It's actually pretty good, you can say it, they're listening to you. It's, it's really nice, it's very smooth, I would say. And I don't feel any like harsh flavor of the spirits, like when you feel a strong cocktail. So this is very smooth. I like it. Oh. Can I take it? Yes, you can, you can, there you go. You can continue drinking right there. Thank you, cheers. I'll call you for the next one. So guys, uh, as I said, you can make a simple cocktail like this with rakia or you can uh, use it in a different ways as a modifier uh, if you want as well like when you're making your cocktails you could use you can blend that even with with whiskey you can put any other spirits even rum uh, in there and try to balance it up for, for example especially when you make tiki cocktails very often you are mixing different spirits you could be using rum uh, with uh, cognac but why not try it run with Rakia? So it's just another, another market, another thinking for our creative brains as a bartenders to start uh, experimenting. And uh, this is it for the first Rakia. And I'm looking forward to hear a bit more for the second one. Great. Uh, thank you, Georgie. Well, that certainly sounds delicious. And hopefully we'll come soon to uh, Lucky Kane to, to enjoy a cocktail or two with Rakia. Uh, let's go on and switch to the second one, quite a niche boutique, uh, less known presently, hopefully better known uh, definitely in the future, because they deserve it. A new Rakia on the, on the Rakia market, uh, that which is uh, a brand called The Alchemist by Clemence Distillery. And I'll pass it on to Robert, the son of uh, Tihomir, uh, the distillery master, to, uh, to tell us a bit more about the distillery and of course the Rakia. On to you, uh, Robert. Thank you, thank you. So, um, yes, I'm the son of the master distiller. Um, I'm quite connected to the distillery. It's uh, very personal to us. It's very craft as well. Um, it's a small craft distillery and we specialize in producing, um, in producing products, beverages with high added value. Why? We work without sugars, no added chemicals, no additional supplements. Everything is done by hand. Well, actually, about 80% of the work is done by hand, and then about 20% is helping machines, such as bottling machine. There is 100% control from picking the raw product to distillation and then the finished product. Um, this corresponds to what our mission is as well, is to preserve the natural aromas and taste of the raw products we use, elevate them, and then to create a finished product that is essentially equivalent to joining a painting. Um, it's like painting taste, you can almost say, which is based entirely on the high quality product, 100% control and elite professionalism. But that professionalism does not arrive at the door just one day and they let's create a new brand and uh, let's just make something. Uh, it took years and it took hard work and persistence. Uh, it was the longest hope for the distiller, my father, who had the vision of his own brand almost as soon as he started distilling. Uh, the history is very interesting and very colorful. The distillery was officially founded in 2007, and in the next 11 years, it works as a hired distillery, essentially making everyone else's alcohol, of course, Rakia. Um, it was in those 11 years uh, that the master distiller learned how, why, and where. Uh, it took 11 years and more than 1,000 uh, hours to develop this master skill on how to create the, uh, the perfect product. In that time, a lot of materials have went through my father's hands, a lot of mistakes that people made, uh, the raw materials, uh, he saw what to do, what not to do, trial, error, experimentation, observing, tasting, um, around 350 tons per season of raw materials were done, uh, worked on, just by the master distiller's two hands, which is a lot of materials. Uh, this also goes into the design of the label. The designer just uh, kind of uh, assembles the label, but my, my father designed it, the bottling, the labeling, um, moving all the materials. And it is 
made exactly with that passion to create, to work and to produce the most balanced craft rack here. There is a reason why we are the first craft distillery in Bulgaria and the only one at the current day. And based on that experience, my father finally decided that it's time to create his own label. And in 2011, uh, 2019, sorry, this is exactly what happens. This is also why it's the alchemist a posteriori, that a posteriori actually means based on experience. Um, the brand was not created because there was not enough rakia and no enough time of the day or anything like that. It was, it was an artist who could not stop creating. Why the alchemist? The alchemy is considered not to be just uh, scientific. Alchemists carry all the knowledge and wisdom since ancient times, and they made it into an art. They were seeking perfection, and, and um, they were seeking the ultimate states of materials and even magic. The main process behind alchemy, it's in its core, it's uh, distillation, uh, which is how we translate into our product and philosophy as well. Uh, we are seeking perfection, experimentation, and we are definitely not bound by most norms in the industry as well. We're also seeking balance, consistency, and elevation. Um, this, again, the alchemist, alchemy, magic, everything is done by hand. So everything in our technology is uh, primarily classic for distillation. We, prefer, we preserve our distill, uh, distillate in inox steel vessels. Um, now, depending on the characteristics of the distillate, we also, um, or the desired final product, the racket can be stored either in inox or oak barrels. In our case, we use uh, two types of uh, oak barrels, sub-Bulgarian oak and French one, where we work with French oak barrels from the company Eva Cart. And those barrels have to have at least two season harvest of wine stored in them before our use. Um, the distillation occurs entirely in copper, copper cauldrons, uh, in copper stills. From the moment the raw materials are ready to distill it for distillation to the final product, which is in the bottle, the distillate doesn't touch anything else but copper. And why is that important? Um, copper purifies, and that's very important. Uh, after the distillation starts, it goes into the fractional column and then into the cooler, which also has a sheaf of copper tubes instead of spiral, uh, which allows for a maximum cooling. And then it comes out in the copper uh, barret, which is where the final distillate comes out of. Um, if you try the Alchemist, uh, you're gonna find a very interesting taste and also that history in, in what we've made. Um, the combination of our triple blend gives it a very balanced and smooth character and nuance. Uh, but also the, the muscats, which is one of the, the sort of grapes we've used, and the slight spiciness blends with the balanced, dense feel of the traditional Bulgarian sort of mid. And then the Wurstraminer uh, gives it those rosy, citrusy notions that completes the whole beverage. It is gentle, but a slight spiciness to it to complete the whole taste. And this is why the raki is perfect for green salads, spinach, uh, honey mustard dressing. It also goes well with fresh meats, uh, like prosciutto, slightly panned bacon. So you put the bacon, you just slightly pan it with a little bit of olive oil. That, that's perfect for, the, for, for our rakia. Uh, jamon, and of course, we can go without cheese. So uh, mozzarella, ricotta, burrata, and a king in cheese, that's goat cheese. Um, we think that this triple blend is a great creative match for starters. So the beginning of the dinner, having something small like a salad, a little bit of cheese, start your dinner, you have a little bit of a, um, our perfect blend. And it works great in cocktail as we, we're gonna see in a bit. Um, we consider our brand and all beverages coming out of our distillery designer. Uh, designer beverages, or the way I like to call it, the Louis Vuitton of Rakia. <laughs> and that's about it, about us and the Alchemist. Nice one, uh, Robbie. Uh, quite exciting. Uh, it shows all the way that you're a big part of the Clemence Distillery 
uh, and obviously a part of the family and it's quite dear to to your heart uh, and it's quite a unique product i just tasted i've been tasting it for for a few months since we uh, listed it and it's something standing out of the crowd by far this uh, this year here guys uh georgie what can we make with that uh, to twist it in a way more modern uh way in a cocktail so uh first of all is it's interesting to see uh, the versatility of the Rakia with the first two products that we just started. Like looking at uh, the first one, Burga 63, like eight amazing pots and columns too that they're using to make. And I looked on, on the photo and that is a very good modern uh, distillery that makes two million liters. And then you look on the other side of the picture of getting something that is crafted and really looked after and made by the family business. So you see that the 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 vers how versatile it is, even with the not only by products but by production itself. And uh, um, yeah, so the rakia you've tried it already. For me, I get uh, I get that fruitiness again, uh, uh, slightly floral, but the floral is not that much. It's a bit more of a spice and slightly peppery on the nose as well. And then when you taste it, it's very balanced. So what I wanted to create here is. I wanted to add uh, a little bit more floral notes to it and add a bit of freshness to create a cocktail that really going to um, take the fruitiness that you've got in there, but make it a bit more floral and uh, fruity and fresh. So therefore, I'm going to start with the drink that I'm going to make. And this actually is a shaker. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is. So we will start with watermelon. I mean, I grew up in a place that had field of watermelons. And I've been literally, uh, when I was a kid going back to visit my uh, grandma, I was eating so much watermelon in the summer, I was getting sick from the liquid that I'm getting in my stomach. And I love watermelons. And in Bulgaria, you get amazing watermelon. So therefore I wanted to make a drink that is with watermelon. So uh, it's more Bulgarian. Then uh, the other thing that I'm gonna add in there is mint. Oh, I think we call it Georgian. Oh. <laughs> uh, but there you go. I'll add a little bit of mint. So what we're talking about fresh and aromatic watermelon and mint. You can't go wrong. All right. Then I will add this inside. And I'm going to give it a, I'm going to muddle it a little bit. So I can extract the flavor of uh, the mint and I can get the juice out of the watermelon. Smells delicious. Okay. Now the next thing, elderflower. Elderflower is so popular in Bulgaria, it's everywhere on the streets. And the first time that I actually I tried elderflower in my life, uh, it was when I was a kid. My grandma was making elderflower cordial herself, and it, it it was it was staying a little bit fermented as well. So it, it left the bubbles in there, and you were drinking it as a soft drink. It was absolutely delicious. Uh, the problem was that I couldn't go to pick it up because I'm highly allergic to the flower itself. But I can drink it, which is, which is the good thing. I just need to stay away from the bushes. So I will put um, 15 milliliters of elderflower. This is St. German elderflower, but you can use elderflower cordial. Or if you're in Bulgaria and your grandma is making elderflower, is the best. You just tell her, I need some elderflower. I got to take, I got to try that cocktail that Georgie made. Okay, then after that, I'll use honey again as a sweetener, and I'll put 15 milliliters of honey. There you go. And then most of the things that are inside here so far are sweet, so we need to balance it, and I'll put 10 milliliters of lime. There's more sweet parts than sour inside, but trust me, it works perfect because the freshness of the watermelon and the mint is going to balance it out. Okay, then we're, we've got everything inside. Actually, no, we don't have the rack here. The most important part. There you go. Uh, I'll put double measure. Maybe open it first. That's the tricky part of this bottle. So you're looking at the top. Now oh, it's open. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. But look at the bottle. It's, it just shows how simplicity could be perfect. You see, it's, the design is really good. It really kind of like reminds you of that. Uh, alchemist kind of feel that it's, it's not over the top, but it is simple, but it's perfect. Okay. 
to add this. And then after that, the only thing we need to add is just ice and give it a shake. Uh, this this shaker was uh, made for me from a friend of mine, of mine from uh, Amaro Montenegro, and it actually says "Lucky Cane" on it. It clicks perfect. So, gotta give it a good shake to marry up all the flavors in there. Because you've got uh, watermelon that is uh, pieces of watermelon and mint. You gotta really crush it and get the flavors together. And then after that, we will strain in this martini glass in here. See what beautiful color you get. That is like kind of dark pink, red. And it just, the aroma I can smell it from here, that watermelon, mint, and all the flower. It's amazing. But you can get, you can, you can even by the aroma, you can get the, the aroma of the rakia straight away. This is the thing when you're using rakia, you cannot, you can, you can recognize the spirit inside. Some spirit, spirits get lost, rakia won't. So then we'll just put a big slice of watermelon on the side like this to make it beautiful and to make you want to have it because who doesn't like watermelon? And then you can just put on the side a little bit of mint like this rest it or stick it in the watermelon itself like that and this is delicious and now let's see what claudia thinks claudia do you want to taste that drink we're gonna get her drunk by the end of it and she has to finish the master class <laughs> i mean not the master class but like the technical part of it all right look at this oh i'm loving it is that pretty or not it is can i eat the garnish first no you gotta just drink it and take it do whatever you want with it just just tell us what you think It's very fresh. Yeah. It's very refreshing. Yeah. I like it. I like it even more than the previous one. There you go. She likes it even more than the previous one. Okay, you can have it now. You can uh, you can continue. How uh, many I have left more? Nah, don't worry about it. It's okay. Can I order double? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see, so... Thank um, you. Very, very uh, tasty drink. So you can, you can experiment. You can play around. You can use different things. And uh, it, it works. When you're using a rakia, you just need to... Play, uh, uh, bear in mind of the flavors of that drink, what is going to work with it. Because uh, as I said, rakia is quite full of flavors. So uh, it stands out in there. It depends on what you want to achieve with the drink, but it's very easy to, to work with. And I will uh, suggest you to start playing around and you see. So uh, ne next rakia is very special as well. So I can't wait until I hear uh, more about it. Uh, I got given one bottle of this one's uh, probably about six months ago uh, and uh, on the first sit down uh, I finished it nothing that I'm proud of but it was super tasty and I remember then uh, Dido was asking me on the next day do you have some more to, I wanted to do a drink with you or something like this and I was like uh, you're gonna have to send me another one mate <laughs> but yeah so uh, let's hear a bit more about uh, this Rakia called Edna amazing stuff uh, Georgie uh, thanks a lot that looked uh, super cool super fresh that cocktail, all exciting. I wish I could have tasted it, but we'll have the opportunity hopefully soon. Uh, on to uh, Svetlin. Svetlin, please uh, tell us about this uh, really, really unique uh, rakia that uh, it got produced uh, through your specifications. Uh, let us know what it's all about. Maybe unmute yourself as well. You hear us, Svetlo? Svetlin? In order to make, uh, as I like saying, Rakia a global drink, because Rakia deserves that place, so we need to get there somehow. Uh, thank you, guys. Well, what did we try to do? The product itself is called Edna Rakia. The people who understand Slavic languages would be somehow able to understand and explain to themselves why. When you go to a restaurant, what do you do? You order 
at Narakia, Yed Naraki, or whatever in uh, the various Slavic languages, meaning one Rakia. So our job as uh, international experts and people who are familiar with Rakia spirits and so on, is to make sure that this expression becomes somehow global. Uh, I am a taster and a judge at Spirit Selection by Concours Mundial de Bruxelles. I'm also becoming, as of this year, a taster at ISS, the Sugar Cane Spirits Competition. Uh, so I have a high affinity towards high ester spirits. What does that mean? I mean, high ester spirits are the ones that have a longer cut and the ones having similar to Ron more aesthetic profile and the higher higher fruitiness let's put it that way so when we started with the project and you can judge that by the name we wanted to create rakia by the book so to say imagine it in the way that when somebody goes to a restaurant and they order one rakia meaning edna rakia this is also the symbol at the front label of the bottle this is the old Slavic symbol for one. This is the way one used to be written in the old Slavic languages. So when somebody orders one rakia, we wanted to create the product which would correspond to that idea. And what is rakia for us? I mean, for me. Rakia for me and for us at Rakia Shop is a product which is as complex as possible, because rakia must be complex. This is the tradition of rakia. It's very complex. Rakia must be fruity, because it's a fruity product. I mean, it's not about oak extraction. It's not a whiskey. It's rakia. It must not be over-matured in oak. It must be also uh, as, uh, so to say, it must lead the people into a development in the glass. I mean, when you have a complex spirit, complex spirit, it must develop in the glass. So what did we try to do? We took three different distillates and we blended them into one. It was a very long project. And here at this stage, I would like to say thank you to, especially to Mr. Klink of Eduardo Mirolio, because the distillates are actually old distillates from Eduardo Mirolio. I went there and we started working with him step by step, step by step. It was a very long process. Imagine uh, the process of uh, blending uh, very nice bourbon. You take the different barrels, you taste them, you blend them. It takes a while before they harmonize. Then you take another blend, you harmonize again and so on. So we went through that process. And at the end of the day, we wanted to produce something really by the book. I mean, uh, not too simple, not too mature, and so on. And this is what, what we came up with. Uh, this rakia is intended for people who can really, who would really be able to appreciate what rakia is. It is also intended for people who understand food pairing, because rakia is about food pairing. I mean, uh, the basic idea of rakia is to be the only spirit on the planet which is easily paired with food. You have, of course, tequila, which is paired with uh, the regular food on, the, on that part of the earth, you know, uh, Mexico and the Caribbean islands. But its potential to pair, to pair it with food is rather limited. While rakia has different kinds of it. it you have rakia produced from various sorts of, uh, of fruits. They have uh, the sort within the sort and so on. So we wanted to sort of promote rakia as something which is intended to be paired with food. And if you visit... Uh, some of our events that we organize in Bulgaria, uh, we, we always have a rakia, we have something to pair it with, and we do it very, very professionally. So think about rakia as something that needs to be paired with food. And when you drink at Narakia, our, our brand in this case, uh, you can imagine the very bright spectrum, spectrum of foods that it, it could be paired with, meaning... Uh, 
uh, dried meat, foie gras, uh, like um, any kind of uh, heavier salads. You can also uh, pair it with nuts and so on. And it's a very good basis for a cocktail. When we talk about cocktail, of course, this is not my this is not my strength. And I would like to surely transfer to Georgi Radev and uh, thank him for all the effort to create this excellent cocktails for us. So he can introduce to you the, the cocktail he made with it. Hello. Hello, guys. You hear me? Yes, yes, yes Georgi. Go ahead. Yeah. OK. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, continue with uh, the different styles of, uh, of rakia, you can see now this is completely different from what we've tried so far. And um, I just uh, to, uh, wanted to say again, wh when, you, when did you send me this uh, bottle of uh, rakia? And you remember what, what I text you back. I tried it and I was like, that reminds me so much of rum. Literally, like when I, when I had the, the nose first, I was like, that is, that's got such an uh, agricole uh, rum notes on the nose. And then I tasted it, and you've got a, a bit of agricole and a bit of uh, uh, traditional rum, but it really reminds it you. Uh, it reminded me a lot of, of a cane spirit. You've got you got that fruitiness, you got that nutty flavor in there. You got the um, a bit of uh, raisin and stuff, which normally a bit of vanilla, which normally you would get in in in, in a good rum. And this is uh, why I. Uh, I really liked it, and I, I, I was uh, talking to you about that uh, that um, uh, rakia. Uh, we were chatting almost all night, and then uh, and then I made uh, straight away one cocktail with it, which uh, uh, states uh, the cocktail that we are going to be making now. But uh, um, very very well done, uh, rakia. And um, as you were saying, yes, uh, it, it works uh, uh, very well with pairing with food. I mean, it's almost like treating it as you are mentioning about Mexico, like Mexicans drink their tequila, especially your mezcal. The mezcal you need to drink, you need to uh, treat it with respect when you are drinking it. You cannot just down it because three mezcals later, it'll be game over. And uh, probably it's gonna be a similar thing with the rakia. You gotta, uh, you gotta treat it with respect. You need to eat, drink slowly and enjoy yourself so you can last all night. Uh, we, we all had nights that we didn't last all night. With this, it's going to be faster. So uh, now uh, I'm going to make the cocktail. So this cocktail, what I wanted to do with it, I wanted to make a drink that you can easily make at home. You probably, every uh, person has those ingredients in, uh, in their houses. With this, the tequila, I'm going to make a sort of like a twist on, um, on a Manhattan with it. But you can play around. Don't don't get restricted to your old fashioned in Manhattan because that is the easiest thing to do. You can use it in. Imagine it this way: any drink that you would make with rum, with H rum, with agrico or uh, traditional, put it in there. Try. It. Therefore, uh, I'm experimenting with few tiki drinks, and this is when it came the idea that we are working on with Dido uh, to create a, a Bulgarian zombie. So I'm going to use, uh, normally the zombie recipe is made with a blend of rums and exotic flavors. I'm going to use blend of different styles, rakia and uh, uh, Bulgarian flavors uh, with uh, Bulgarian style spices uh, instead of the normal spices that you get. And we'll create something super special. And we're thinking of uh, creating a, a special muck uh, as well, which is going to be uh, in a cooker. So the uh, cookie, as we, we call it in Bulgaria, but you'll hear about that a bit more uh, in the future. First, uh, now I'm gonna make you that drink. So we'll start with 50 milliliters of Edna. And you put it in the mixing glass. I mean, in your house, you can use any, any long glass that you've got and you just put it inside. Then after that, normally when you're making your, um, Manhattan, you'll be using vermouth. Not everyone has vermouth at home. So, and uh, this uh, rack, I wanted to put freshness in this rack here instead of putting vermouth. So you can use uh, white wine, but what I'll suggest you is try to use a very uh, aromatic and fruity white wine. If you're using something that is a bit uh, 
uh, to acidic and sour, it won't work. You, you need aromatic, a little bit on the sweet side uh, and fruity wine. So therefore I went for cloudy based Sauvignon Blanc, uh, which will work very well in this recipe. But you can play around and experiment. So I'll put 25. So recipe is super easy. You do double shot of rakia to single shot of wine. And then after that, I'm gonna add, you, this needs sweetness now because your vermouth is, is sweet. Uh, so we need to add sweetness. So I'm gonna put agave syrup in there, only 10 milliliters. If you don't have agave syrup, uh, well, you can buy it anyway. Uh, but uh, if you wanna have it now, you can just substitute it for honey. If you're substituting it for honey, try to use some more powerful honey, not acacia, for example. Uh, put, get something that's got more oomph in the flavor of the honey, if you understand what I mean. So this is, uh, I'm going to put 10 milliliters of agave. And then the other ingredient, as I was talking about uh, using Bulgarian style of spices, I'm going to put three leaves of bay leaf. This is not really used, this, this type of spice is not really used uh, in cocktail making. You will be using your nutmeg, your cinnamon, your clove, ginger, whatever. There's so many different ones that we're using, but bay leaf, not really. And uh, in Bulgaria, bay leaf is used a lot. We use it uh, uh, a lot in cooking, in making uh, different pickles uh, and stuff like this. Uh, so bay leaf's got a really interesting flavor because as a spice uh, or herb, it's got this kind of like bitter notes in the end, but uh, it's got, uh, uh, it's very aromatic as well. And it's going to add that different dimension to that drink that it needs it. So for example, when you're making yourself uh, your um, Manhattan, you'll be adding uh, bitters mostly uh, Angostura bitters. I didn't want to go down that road because the Angostura bitters are going to kind of almost kill the freshness that we've got in there with the, the rakia, the uh, aromatic wine and the agave. So I wanted to add bitterness, but in a different way. This is why I'm talking to you and I'm stirring it because you need to stir it for a little bit longer. So you before you even add the ice, because you want to get the flavor of the bay leaf inside of your drink. Uh, if, you, if you want, you can even uh, infuse the bay leaf with the rakia beforewards, and then after that, you don't need to use it on spot, but uh, that takes time, and we don't have that much time now. So after that, I will add the ice. And I will stir it again. Because this, this is, basically only alcohol. You've got um, the wine, the rakia, and uh, a little bit of sweetener. You can take some time and stir it nicely. So when you're making that drink, the most important thing is to make sure that everything is super cold. Make sure that your ice is not watered down, it's fresh. So you, you will chill the drink, but you're not gonna water it down too much. The most important thing for that drink is to be super cold. Your glass needs to be super chilled as well because this is when is the tastiest. So then, because I said that, uh, you need to drink it fast too after that, you know, because if it stays, the longest taste is gonna start warming up. You don't want that. All right, now we're gonna tip this off. And just strain this in the glass. See how oily it is. Okay. And I'll just put on the side, I'll squeeze it a little bit like this. So you, we, we want a little bit of the zest of the lemon inside of the drink. You don't need to do this. You can just uh, make yourself uh, just a lemon zest. Uh, it doesn't have to be that way. So. You, you're already coming for the next one. I'm feeling a little bit sick already. <laughs> I know, you see, that, that was the reason why I told you to have those drinks because uh, they are, just gonna drop it in there, uh, they are very powerful. 
Rocky attacks you in a different way, you know? And you see by the end of it, when she tries all, all these drinks, she'll be very happy because uh, when you start drinking Rocky, you need to, you will understand it. it. It's It kind of like gets you tipsy in a very happy, nice way and it gets into your blood quicker. It, it's, as I said, it's like you're drinking mezcal. You have to respect it. So now you've got, you've got inside the, the lemon. It looks like... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, um, it just adds on to the, the look of it and then uh, on the same time you get the fusel of the lemon that balances as well it adds citrus to it and it balances the drink because you've got 10 milliliters of agave that is delicious yeah I'm there you go the previous one tastes when I was drinking more and more it tastes like um watermelon wine watermelon wine okay i don't know if i'm right but for me with every sip it was like so th this is more like a aperitif uh style so if you um because we were saying that uh with uh with edna that this is something that you pair with food so this is a really great way of starting uh with the aperitif you drink it and then you, uh, with, with the wine and the rakia inside, it kind of like gets you in the mood and gets you ready, get your palate uh, and taste buds uh, ready to enjoy the food and enjoying this with food at the same time as well. This actually is my favorite. Oh, there you go. So this is her favorite. The more, the more they come, the more favorite it becomes. That's what rakia does to you. It's happiness. I think all of them taste kind of <laughs> sweet. For me, it reminds me of a bit of honey flavor. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's really nice. I thought uh, this one is... You, you can take that and enjoy it. And uh, I'll take you. I'll have a sip as well. I'm taking the rest. Mm. <laughs> Thank there you. There you go. So uh, you see how, how simple you can make those drinks. So like that, the, the main reason why I made the drinks to be like this is just to showcase you that um, uh, you can easily start making them at home. But you can really take that to the next level and uh, create something even more complex uh, and bring it to um, our world of mixology. Bartenders can start experimenting and see it's going to be, it's gonna be uh, interesting interesting thing to have on your menu something that other people don't so when your customers come there and go like what is this rakia and you just explain because you've you uh you heard it and you know and it's something something different than people can can try and especially i guarantee you when we make that zombie with the with the rakias that is going to be taking you by surprise it'll be stronger than than actually the normal uh, classic zombie so um uh, this is, uh, for me, I'll pass it on to Dido, and then in the end, if you want Dido, I'll say a few words. Georgie, amazing again. Uh, even quite a few new new things that I've learned myself, knowing Rakia for many years, the same as you, having grown up with uh, Rakia around ourselves, from my grandfather, father, the whole family, etc. Well, the very curious thing will be for us to find out for a few that I know that are Rakia virgins, I must say, that have tasted Rakia for the first time tonight, to say a couple of words or their opinions uh, about what they discovered or how they, how they liked Rakia in general. I know a man, uh, Joe the Badman WhatsApp, that I would ask him to unmute and maybe say a couple of words of how he likes Rakia. <laughs> <Joe. laughs> hey, Diddy, how you doing, man? I'm all right. Hey, Georgie, my brother. This <laughs> man. I love when you, man. We, 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 look, look, Dillian and I will come with a couple of bottles of Rakia and we'll smash your place up soon, right? Um, so, I've drunk Rakia from other countries in, you know, in the, in the Central European area, but uh, the three that you've presented me with me today, uh, well, first of all, you couldn't get three more different drinks, which is fantastic, right? I mean, I think that there was always a perception in my head that Rakias would have a much closer... Uh, much smaller style, you know, variety of style. And and these three drinks are widely, widely parted in terms of what you can do with them and how they drink. Um, they all represent, all re reflect the kind of things I like in other spirits. And I, I think Georgie pointed out very quickly, um, Svetlin, your, your Edna Rakia is, is sick, man. It, it came straight out of a stink pit in Hamden Estate in Jamaica, man. And I was like, I love the, the estuary funk of it. I love the sweetness of it. Like you said, it keeps on revealing new flavours the more you sip at it. I've been drinking these neat. Um, I will make some cocktails with my wife over the weekend with what's left over. 
Um, but that was an absolute banger. Um, and the uh, the Burger 63, which we started with, was so floral. I think that was much more the kind of style of raki I was expecting, made from a miskit or a muscat or something more traditionally aromatic, low acid, but but made obviously to very, very high quality tolerances. And and that um, that tasted very Eastern European to me, the first one, um, but very, very clean, very pure, very easy to drink. And I would probably drink a, a shit ton of that neat, actually. I don't think I'd mix that. I'd drink a lot of that. Um, bring us on to the middle one, which um, was an absolute game changer. If you poured that to me in a glass, I would have said it was a, a, a grappa nonino or a Jacobo Poli grappa from Italy. And we all know how expensive those grappers are. This is fighting with some of the best eau de vies in the world, I think. Um, and uh, Robert, I think you're making an amazing product. I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I, I knew when I went on the old seller list just, just now, I knew it wasn't going to be cheap, but pay peanuts, get monkeys, right? I mean, the, you can taste the effort that's gone into this. Um, I've become an absolute sucker and a lover with my wife. Every time we go on holiday, we go to Austria in summer when we can. And I've become an absolute sucker for fruit spirits, um, apricot schnapps, uh, pear schnapps, plum schnapps, all those wonderful drinks that we have in, in Central Europe, which the English completely ignore. And uh, it's a journey that I want to continue. I'm even thinking about writing a book about it, maybe spending a couple of years traveling around Europe. Um, but what a classy drink that is. Um, so three completely different drinks with three different applications. The first one I would drink, you know, with my starters in Bulgaria. The second one I would drink at the end of a meal, just like any other grapper. And the third one, man, I just I just get messed up with Georgie with this. It's just <laughs> it's, me, it's, me, it's mess up juice, man. Sweatland, delicious, man. And Georgie, I'll, I miss you, bro. I'll that for when you come and see me. My yes, you bet. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. You bloody bet. Dino's gonna send me another one. Don't worry, guys. Thank, thank you for inviting me to this talk. It was it was really eye opening. And I, I will spend my own money. I'm going to buy a bottle of each of these. They're fantastic. Thank you. It's a pleasure, Joe. And thank you very much for the feedback. That sounds uh, really, you. obviously, interesting to, to hear that, uh, that from you all together. Well, guys, uh, more or less, we'll wrap it up. Uh, a few good opinions and good, good scores. Obviously, a few other uh, cocktail suggestions in the chat that we had, which was all great. Uh, so yeah, only not to take too much time of yours. Thank you for uh, listening to that presentation. Uh, thank you for tasting and discovering uh, what Rakia is. Uh, quite a versatile, as, as Joe said, uh, we literally we presented three very different styles, but there is only so many more styles that you can discover. And these were only the grape Rakias. Going forward, we'll do other events with other fruit Rakias. Of course, the most traditional being uh, plum and being apricot uh, Rakias. Uh, so, yeah, definitely quite a lot more to discover and to incorporate to somehow join forces as we've uh, chatted with uh, Georgie uh, to promote it here and to establish it as a category in UK down the line. We're not, we don't, it's not going to be overnight, but give it a few years. And I'm sure quite a few more people will know about what the case and will use it in their cocktails. And there, as we uh, confirmed, our ambition is for every good bar to have a good bottle of rakia behind to offer to, uh, to its guests and to use in a cocktail. So on the behalf of the old seller, thank you very much, everybody. George, do you want to wrap it up? Yeah, I just want to say to everyone, I know there's going to be a few friends uh, that are there and a few people that I don't know, but hopefully I'll get to know you soon, guys. And um, thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is... Uh, um, this is the spirit of Bulgaria, and uh, as Dido said, it would be great if we can get that out there so bars actually start stocking it. And as you would have at least one bottle of pisco, tequila, or mezcal, you should have at least one bottle of uh, rakia. So this is what um, I've been trying to help Dido uh, to, to achieve, and he's, he's pushing it from his side. Thank you for that, and uh, nazdrave. Nazdrave. Na zdrave and have a good night, everybody. Good night. Na zdrave. Na zdrave. Na zdrave.